Well, hello, we are live. It is Wednesday, which means it is a Wedding Hero Wednesday, because Wednesdays are for Wedding Heroes because of the W. <laughs> and aren't we clever? So good to see so many of you here. I've got my book in one hand and my Korean barley tea in the other, uh, and I am ready to cover this book with you today. We have uh, come up to, I got to start by saying congratulations, we are at the elements of the ceremony. You made it. We made it. We are at this part of the meeting with our couple where we are going to get into what they actually want to do in their ceremony. This is week 11, I believe. Yes. Uh, and because the 10th was on the 10th, the 17th, the, the te session 10 being on the 10th was just fantastic. Uh, that'll, again, that'll never happen again. Ubiquitous, serendipitous, ubiquitous, serendipitous. Uh, but here it is, the 11th session on the 17th of April. So many of you in the chat here. Uh, but we have, um, so I'm going to say hi, but we have covered 10 sessions, which got us up to hey, what would you like to do in your in the ceremony itself? Now, of course, we're going to do vows. We're going to do ring exchange. And I say, of course, because we've covered this before on Friday Lives, question of the week. Uh, it is just, it's my belief that the couple promising to each other in the ceremony is really the whole reason why we're doing a ceremony in the first place. So it is my opinion. I argue that we should not do a wedding ceremony without the vows, even if it's just really quick, even if you fold it in with the rings, we do want to hear the couple promise their lives, their commitment, their faithfulness to each other, whatever language you want to use. And so that's why it's, a, it's an assumption for me. We're going to do vows and we're going to do rings. And like I say, in rare cases, you can even fold those together. But what else do the couple want to do? And hard to believe. I know if you've never done a wedding before, as many of the people who join us have a first time scheduled, but they have not officiated yet. I'd say a ton of people in the chat are members of the Unboring Wedding community, the Academy, Pro, whatever it is. And so I love seeing you here and just partying with you every Wednesday and usually uh, and fr most Fridays as well. Uh, and so, but I would say, uh, if you are new here, maybe you thought, if you've never done a wedding, how can you have covered 10 sessions and now we're just finally getting to the elements? Well, if you haven't, I'd say go back and start at number one. We are at page, again, if we're going by book, we're covering this book. If you, if you don't even know, if you landed on this channel and you're like, what's going on here? I'm going through my number one best selling book, Wedding Zero to Ceremony Hero. We are on page 63, and that is where we finally get to, I don't know if you can see that, zoom in, elements, okay? That's page 63. So yes, it has been 62 pages of getting all the people, all the things, all the logistics in place, walking our couple through that. The purpose of this book and of these sessions is to turn you into a guide for your couple. So even if you are at wedding zero, you have never done one, it's overwhelming, you're not sure of all the details, 62 pages worth of details, now you can say, okay, wait a second, ceremony hero, I know what I'm doing, I can guide my couple through the planning session that they need so that they get the ceremony they want, okay? So that's what this is all about. Uh, I just want to say uh, Lavender Lace, I, I, I know that's not your name, if you'll, uh, from... Uh, Warm San Antonio says hello and says bonjour, ne, which was, uh, wow, quite a pleasant surprise. I love the French. And then all of a sudden, uh, we have Sabrina, uh, also a, a world traveler, quite the jet setter, saying bonjour, ne, everyone. And yes, I understand. She corrected herself, bun. It seems like autocorrect doesn't like bun and just wants to say bonnie. Um, <laughs> So, uh, bonjour, ne, I take I take that. Thank you very much. N nice to see you. Uh, and Paul says uh, hello from sunny Trumbull, which made me made me very happy because again, as you know, that southern weather always makes its way up here. Today is gorgeous outside, um, and so I hope if you are viewing, uh, maybe you can throw me in your pocket and go for a walk, go for a golf, uh, sit by the pool, start doing yard work. You can listen along; it's fine. Um, but uh, then I saw Doris's message, which said that waiting for rain to start in New Jersey. So 
that just split me right down the middle. I don't know if I should be excited about tomorrow uh, in terms of another gorgeous day of weather or or rain. Because, again, everything that's down there ends up here. I was promised last week that nice weather is coming when it was freezing and on the verge of snow here. It is gorgeous. That person was right. Now Doris tells me it might rain. Anyway, April showers and all that. That's fine. <laughs> Mark says, I guess I guess it could be worse because Mark says hello from snowy St. Anne, which um, I'm over it. I love the snow. I love skiing. I love the Christmas the snowy vibe thing. But in April, I'm done with it. Sandra's uh, saying hello. See, Sandra's at the garage getting a new tire. Uh, I can tell from the spelling that Sandra is uh, in Great Britain, <laughs> the UK. So uh, good to see you, Sandra. I, uh, I, of course, we, you and I were emailing back and forth this week. You are a member, so good to see you. And I, and I love that you take me to the garage, uh, the, the car shop to get a new tire with a Y. And so hopefully that goes well. You say you're watching from a very cold Shropshire, England. See, there you go. I, I didn't even read the next message. Freezing here. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, maybe our nice weather in Atlantic Canada is going to blow its way over there. Tamara says, hello from rainy Illinois. Bill is here. Hey uh, to me and everyone from Nor from Lake North Lake Tahoe. Beautiful, beautiful country there. Caramer Kathy Maranatha. Wow, I, I was just about to congratulate myself on how well I could say that now, and I blew it. So it keeps me humble. Kathy Maranatha keeps me humble. Uh, hello from sunny Long Island. You hope to have you have time to watch everything without having to hit pause for a client. Okay, well I, th that's a polite way of saying let's get this done, Mark. And I am excited to get into the elements, as I said. Uh, and if you're on my list, you saw that I emailed you and kind of with the teaser, if you're inside the academy or you have access to this spreadsheet, which you can get at unboringweddingacademy.com slash spreadsheet, you can grab that as a thank you gift for joining us. You will see when I teased, you want to ask your couple one absolutely crucial elemental question as you start into the elements, because when you start the ceremony after the processional, because that's where we are. They're going to stand in front of you. They're going to be holding hands. The processional music fades. You say, please be seated because you asked everybody to stand up and you're not going to leave them hanging. That is kind of the biggest rookie mistake you could say. Not the end of the world. People chuckle when you finally catch it. But a lot of new officiants forget to ask everyone to sit down because you've got on your mind what you're going to say. Like you're about to launch into your speech and it's totally understandable. So, Everything's going well. You've asked everyone to sit down. <clears throat> uh, that's where immediately I talk about engaging the crowd. I say this in my course. I include this in my script. I say, well, here they are. Sam and Alex are here today to get married, and they are just perfect for each other. Who's with me on that? Or can I get an amen? Or if it's a really rough crowd, I'll say, can I get a hell yeah? You kind of use your judgment. You look out there and, and, and sense uh, which one to say, which one's going to really get people shouting. If it's a more conservative crowd, I might say, can I get an amen? So, uh, But you want that big, ruckus, cheer, clap, whoop, the couple laugh. Some of the best pictures from the whole ceremony come from that moment because we just... I love the experience of a ceremony of kind of the emotional roller coaster, just like a good movie. You know, my kids have learned to sense this. I'm an English lit major, so study narrative. Uh, and and I love having pointed out to my kids over the years when something is going too well in a story, it's just, oh, three minutes of, and you know it's not over. Something is about to go down. Some The mood is about to shift, right? And so that is what is happening in this, in a great wedding ceremony. There's no downers. But it is a lot of beautiful romance and crying and laughing and romance and humor and crying and how beautiful and moved and touched and then laughter. I, if you can craft a ceremony that is moving like that, like graph the mood, graph the kind of the content emotion, uh, that is a master stroke. And so after the processional, the crying, the tears, the beautiful, the couple are standing in front of each other, just radiating love with each other. I love then breaking the ice again and, and, and getting a whoop and a cheer. It is such a great moment. And then we move into this crucial element. So we are chronologically at this point of the ceremony, uh, and we are chronologically at this point in our 
conversation with a couple. So I am going to uh, pull up that spreadsheet here. Uh, and I'm just going to say hello to some people. Lisa Carroll, good to see you. You and I have been emailing quite a bit about your upcoming wedding this weekend. So excited for you. Elaine is here from the Isle of Wight. A little bit of sunshine there. Good. A lot, lot nicer than Shropshire, it sounds like. Uh, Ava's here saying hello. Good to see you. Jeff jumping out of the PT to make it in time. Out of breath. Well, I am I am so flattered that you, <laughs> you would get out of breath to make it here in time. Nancy, glorious day on Long Island. You're the second person to say so. It must be beautiful out there. James is here from Wisconsin, listening while at work. Well, okay, it's our secret. Good. Hopefully, you still get some work done, maybe. Uh, and Ava says, you're marrying Alex this Friday. <laughs> I always use Sam and Alex because they're kind of like gender amb ambiguous names. <laughs> and so uh, you're marrying Alex this week. You're stealing my thunder, Ava. That's awesome. Leo is here as well from sunny Florida. Well, sunny most of the time. Okay, so let me pull up this spreadsheet and fill you in on the most crucial. And I, and I want to say as I start, you can chit chat with each other. Of course, that is a huge part of this. I love when members and first timers are all colliding in the chat. Feel free to say hi, talk about when your next wedding is, advise each other. Uh, A. Rodriguez Turner just says, greetings from the Tennessee River region of Southwest Tennessee. Uh, your name is not too familiar to me. So I, if you're new here, uh, A. Rodriguez Turner, love that you're here. Thanks for representing Tennessee today. Uh, and, and now, like I say, and if you have a question, you can type it in the chat. I may miss it depending on how much banter goes on while I'm presenting. We are going to finish around the bottom of the hour here today. But I'm going to get through as many uh, pages of this book slash cells on the spreadsheet as I can here uh, as we move forward into the element part. So Let's get to if you if if you are not looking at your screen if you're you know doing something outside or whatever I'll let you know that the spreadsheet is pulled up on the screen right now which you can get at unboringweddingacademy.com/spreadsheet all one word uh, and and you can follow along here so I'm going to flip over to this tab which means I'm not looking at the chat anymore and I've kind of scrolled us down to remember I said we've done ten sessions well all of this was the previous ten sessions now we're into elements. I've kind of marked that off in the spreadsheet. And this is that first crucial question we want to ask. And I just described to you where we're at in the ceremony. Processional has happened, the crying, the moving. Maybe you've asked a question. Do you give your blessing and support? The parents say yes. They're standing in front of each other, smiling, wiping tears away. Even if the couple aren't wiping tears away, somebody is. Parents are. Maid of honor is blowing their nose. Best man is clenching his jaw, trying not to weep openly. <laughs> so that's what's typically going on. So I love breaking all that up by, again, saying they're here today. They're perfect for each other. Can I get a heck yeah? And everybody cheers. And then I always, so this is where you're going to ask your couple and explain to them uh, exactly how it's going to go down. But typically at this point in the meeting, I say to my couple, okay, we're into the elements. And before we get into the things you want to add into your ceremony, um, has, and I phrase it like it's written in the spreadsheet, has a significant family member recently passed away who we would like to acknowledge. Uh, now, again, it sounds strange to say significant family member because, you know, we want to say everyone's equal, everyone <laughs> means the same, etc. cetera. Um, in, the, in the setting of a wedding ceremony, so I understand the sentiment behind that, but of course, in the setting of a wedding ceremony, there are going to be uh, family members that perhaps should be mentioned uh, a little bit. Uh, sh they should be mentioned because they are extremely significant. They, they're, as I say to the couple, if their absence is going to be deeply, deeply felt, uh, and to the point that people are, you know, in some grief that that person is not here. There, we lose family members along the way, of course, always. And, and there's no one who's not significant. But this is where I say, if as that's the way I the, the way I phrase it is, as we have this wedding today, is there someone whose presence is going to be deeply missed? That is, their absence is going to be deeply felt. That's the other way to say it. And a lot of times, well over half my couples look at each other and say, no, that doesn't apply to us. And I say, that's wonderful to hear. Not 
every couple can say that. And so I'm happy for you. Uh, and so it's that brief. Then you just kind of move on and say, not applicable. But a lot of the time you will have a couple who uh, say that, um, yes, you know, a grandparent just passed away. And so this is an example where you'll have a couple where their grandparents did pass away. Of course, everybody wants them there. And a lot of couples will work with their wedding planner to commemorate someone who has passed away uh, with a, a memorial table, something like that, maybe in the reception area, pictures, framed photos of loved ones, things like that. Um, if it's somebody uh, even more uh, significant or whose presence will be deeply uh, missed, whose absence will be deeply felt, there's always two ways to say that, then uh, a lot of couples will put a, a chair, reserve a chair for that person in the front row or in the second row, something like that, to uh, commemorate them as well. So you can have that sort of thing with your planner. A lot of couples are happy to leave it there. Uh, but an, a lot of couples, again, if it's somebody who just very recently passed away, grandma passed away two weeks ago, I've had couples say, uh, my grandmother or this aunt is in the hospital. And of course, we invited them, but they are not able to make it. Then you will want to mention them off the top in a similar way to someone who cannot be there because perhaps they are deceased. Now, again, I typically don't mention that the person has passed away or is deceased or anything like that because typically the family and friends who are missing them know the situation. So I will say that right off the bat. If, you if you're a member of Unboring Wedding Academy, you get my full script. And you can see in there, I've included the scripting for a friend or relative whose will be missed. I do put that right in there. And again, it's generic enough. A lot of couples, the way that I arrived at this scripting is a lot of couples say they do not want it to get too dour to bring the mood down. They don't want a second funeral, I've had some couples say, or a memorial service. I've even had couples where their parent who passed away very recently doesn't want them mentioned in the ceremony. Now, again, you think, well, what about this question? As a significant family member passed away who we'd like to acknowledge. I've had couples in this meeting, you know, the bride, for example, break down, start crying. The groom break down, start crying because his or her parent passed away two months ago, three months ago. That wound is very fresh. The grief is very raw. And even then, a lot of these couples will tell me, I won't be able to hold it together if you mention my mother. And so <laughs> that this is where, again, it's up to our couple. And that's why I like to ask the question, has a significant member of your family passed away who we'd like to acknowledge? So there's the first part of the question. And then the second part is very important as well, because sometimes they say, yes, my mother, six months ago, I'm still not over it. We've got the table set up for her. Uh, we've got, you know, the chair with her name on it and maybe even an article of clothing of hers, something. I'm working with the planner on commemorating my mom in the ceremony, but I do not want her mentioned because uh, the grief will just be too deep. And so it, we defer to our couple on how they want to, if they want to, uh, acknowledge the person. Okay. So, uh, and sometimes they say, can you mention several grandparents if, you know, 10 years ago, every couple is going to have a different feeling about this. You, there's no metric for how significant or how, uh, long ago someone should have passed away. So I'm really kind of expanding this out because I want you to be sensitive. I want you to be ready for whatever answer. And I want you to be able to guide them through again. If you would like me to say something, here's how I do it. And so, Again, in that scripting, right after I say they're perfect, show can I get an amen, cheer, clap, clap. I say today is a day of tremendous joy and celebration. And even as we celebrate, at the very same time, we are mindful of, and I mention the person who has passed away by name, you know, Sam's mother, Susan. 
We so wish that she could be with us today, but she is not physically present. She is with us in spirit, and we feel her in this place. We acknowledge and, and give thanks to her for everything that we are enjoying today. Something like that, where you're acknowledging the reality of life that any time we are celebrating, if we take the time to think about it, typically we don't, we hold these things at bay, but we're also grieving. Life <laughs> life is never clean and compartmentalized like that. Uh, everything, it's a hairball. There's all kinds of things all happening and wrapped up together at the same time. A wedding is no different. And so we want to be sensitive to this. We want to be able to acknowledge this. And that is how we want to approach it. And I ask it here again, because I say it is best to mention this right off the top. It might feel like an elephant in the room. You might have people throughout the ceremony. Again, you're going to tell their story, the laughing and the crying, and then we move on to the significance of the making promises. You don't want people wondering, is that officiant going to say something about Susan who just passed? I find that it's strange. That... And again, if the couple has opted not to, then you don't. But I never want to be responsible or mention at the end where I feel like it'll feel like a tack on or something. Um, I really, really like the couple uh, to, I, I like the guests to to know if I'm going to say something that they can feel like that, that, that I'm going to say something, that, that it's, it's on the table, we've done it, uh, the person was acknowledged. Again, acknowledging the, uh, this kind of goes to my philosophy of if something happens that we don't expect, something falls over, you mention it. You mention it to disempower the scandal or the shock or the tension it causes. It's similar when you have someone who's passed away. You want to mention it right off the top, okay? Uh, so that's that uh, part of the spreadsheet. Again, your couple might shrug and say, no, we don't have anybody like that. They might say, yes, but it's so raw. Please don't mention it. And others might say, can you, mention, can you name every single one of our grandparents or something like that? And when that happens, I do want to say to you, I ask them, how do you say it? I don't want to say Sam's grandmother. or grand I do like to say Sam's nana. Judy, or something like that. I really like to use, because again, most of the family there will have referred to her not as Sam's grandmother, but as Nana Judy. And so I just find that's a nice personal touch as well. When you refer to the grandparents or whoever you're uh, mentioning who has passed away or can't be there physically because they're in the hospital or something, to, to refer to them by their kind of colloquial family title is the best personal touch as well, okay? So now let's get into readings. I'll probably just have time for, for this next section because readings is another passionate uh, point of mine. Are there any readings or prayers by friends or family? So this is where, again, we say we're moving in now. I'm going to tell your story after I commemorate or acknowledge or memorialize somebody. Uh, I'm going to tell your whole story I'm going to ask you your declaration of intent coming out of the story. Do you stand here today to give yourselves to each other in marriage? You'll say, we do. Typically then, so I'm kind of listing these in the chronological order that I like to put them in the ceremony. This is helpful for, to you if you're new and using this spreadsheet as your own guide. This is where, to me, a reading goes best. I get asked this a lot. Where does a reading go best? I think I've done a Friday Live on that. Uh, where should I do a reading? When should I do a reading? I like to do it after my speech and before we get into the the meat, the vows, the, the centerpiece of the ceremony. Now, uh, so I will ask, do you want anyone else to come up and participate? That's typically how I phrase it. Do you want anybody else to come up and read or pray, say a poem, something like that? And a lot of the times they will say no, just where I am. Most people don't want that. But when a couple says yes, so I ask who and when, um, the, the when I would say is less, uh, less important in this cell, uh, of the spreadsheet because I advise them, this is the best place to put it, but I do want to hash it out with a couple and say, now I typically like to, so I put the when here almost like as a, a flag for you as well. If you're using this spreadsheet, you can advise them. I think the best place for a reading is right here after I tell your story and before we move into vows and whatnot. But, uh, you know, depending on who it is and what they're going to read, where do you like this? Because if it's, a, for example, somebody reading a prayer or a blessing, uh, and this is going to come up in the next cell, I do like to have that right before I pronounce them. After the vows, after the rings, uh, it's nice. Uh, if the couple asks me to say a blessing, I do a very generic ecumenical blessing typically. May, may God bless you and keep you and God's face shine on you. 
Even couples that aren't religious, they say, yeah, we'd like a blessing because our family is pretty religious. What do you got? That's the one I typically include. Or sometimes they say, we want a family member to come up and say a prayer or a family member to come up and say a blessing. Where should they do that? And so depending on what they're going to do, that's where I decide the best place for them. A prayer and a blessing by a family member, I think, goes nicely after the vows and the rings and right before the pronouncement. It's kind of putting this on the promises they've made, then they come up and they say a prayer or a blessing. And then you say, thank you. And then you move into that pronouncement of the couple married. And then you kind of, I always say, once the pronouncement happens and they kiss and everybody cheers, the the wheels are kind of off the ceremony at that part. You don't want to get back to doing anything serious. You want to be wrapping it up at that point. And so here, uh, a reading goes best right after you tell their story and before you get to their vows. A more religious reading or a prayer or a blessing goes really well after the vows and the rings, kind of like put it in that sacred category. Now, I have <laughs> I've done a video, I've talked about this before, about when a couple says to me, we'd like a reading. Mark, what do you recommend? What you got? Uh, I always say no. And so in the book, I talk about how, <laughs> you know, I got so passionate about this because I would I realized I tell the story, we're laughing, we're crying, people are having an amazing time. And then somebody, you know, the couple asked somebody to come up and read like a really stiff, stodgy, something that just like everybody hears at weddings. There's nothing wrong with that. But the reader feels pretty mortified because of the the feeling in the air is so unlike a typical ceremony that I, I just say to the couple now, I advise them, we don't want to set your reader up to just kind of come up and feel like they're interrupting a really great proceeding. So I say, that's why I don't recommend readings. I recommend you choose the reading. And if you can't think of a good reading, then don't put it in the ceremony. But if you can think of a good reading, let's put it in the ceremony because readers should come from the heart. Readings should come from the heart. Uh, sometimes they just, you know, let want somebody to participate and read and they'll let them choose. That's great. And I say, I think it's a good idea to, uh, you know, choose for your reader or ask them what they're going to read. And I say, because... This is not going to be a usual ceremony. You tell your story. There's going to be so much fun happening that you don't want your reader coming up and feeling like, oh, this is really not matching what's going on. Okay, so that and I tell the story in the book of the couple when when my first time I I really pushed back. I said, look, I'm not going to I'm just not going to recommend a reading. And they were surprised. I thought officiants recommend readings. And I say, I'm not going to because of all the things I just described to you. The reading should come from you. Man, if I had just suggested a reading, I would have disallowed what happened next because the bride thought really hard and looked at her fiance and said, you know, I think what would be really cool. Um, yeah, I have an idea. I'm going to ask my dad. And so I said, OK, great. I'll put that on TBD. Well, then I found out she got back to me in the script. She asked her she asked her dad and her dad always read, oh, the places you'll go by Dr. Zeus when she was a kid. Man, when I talk about it, I think it's because I'm a dad of a nine-year-old and 11-year-old. I start to get emotional <laughs> because, and, and it was true of then. So her dad stood up, came to the mic and read, Oh, the Places You'll Go by Dr. Zeus. And there wasn't a dry eye in the freaking place. Dr. Zeus made everybody cry. It was so beautiful because of the pre-existing relationship and the context in which it was read that he said, I used to read this to Maddie every single night. I'm so proud of the man she has chosen, proud of her. And in that context, reading this little kid's book that I read to my kids a hundred times, everybody was sobbing. (laughs) And I just thought to myself, if I had recommended to her 1 Corinthians 13 or some platitude wedding type poem, that would have circumvented this amazing moment from happening. And I did not want that. uh, From that day on, I just pledged I'm not going to recommend a reading. (laughs) I'm not going to do it, okay? So the last cell here really quick then that we're going to cover today, any religious elements like prayers or blessings by the officiant? So do you want me to do that, okay? So that first thing is, do you want family or friends to read or say a blessing or something? Grandma, then we'll talk about that. But then I ask them, do you want me to do a prayer or a blessing? In the course, if you're a course member, you know I have a prayer that I use and a blessing that I use because there's no end to it. 
you don't want to be too religious. Typically, again, if you're not a minister, if you're watching this and you're a pastor, it might be different. But if you're a friend or relative or somebody like me that people find on the internet, they don't want it to get too religious just because you're not a minister. You're not their minister. That's why they're asking you. They typically don't want a religious ceremony. But a lot of couples will say, I think a prayer would be nice. So my kind of rule is a prayer goes really well as we get started, like I say, in around the same time as the readings. So coming out of the story, we laugh, we cry, oh, it's beautiful, romantic, all that stuff. Like I said, with that emotional curve, the prayer part gets a little bit serious. You know, I don't make everybody bow their heads or whatever. I just say, and now join me in a prayer and I'll read the prayer. I provide that in the course. Uh, a blessing, like I said, I will do right before I pronounce them and everybody cheers and claps and that kind of thing. The blessing is very kind of ecumenical. May God bless you and keep you. So I want to know for them, I asked them on a scale of zero to 10, where are you religious wise? Some, some of them are zero. The highest I've ever had is like a five. Any higher than that, asking their minister or clergy person to do it. And so that's where then I asked them, do you want me to say a prayer or a blessing? Okay, so hopefully that was helpful. We got through <laughs> three items on the spreadsheet. I will just briefly head into the chat now and see what am I missing over here? Oh, Tamara, we missed Tamara. Tamara had to leave. Uh, Rock and Reverend Ron is here checking in. Good to see you. Uh, so glad you find this awesome, Nancy. I'm really, really happy to help. Uh, and Lenise, uh, there's a conversation here going on that I missed. Uh, let's see. Lenny says, oh, Latina says, I just did a wedding where the mom had passed away when the bride was 12 and a small group of ladies walked a photo of her mother down the aisle while holding her favorite flower and a candle. That is that is gorgeous. That whew, I'm feeling that uh, that's the kind of thing that you as the officiant want to make room for, want to make space for. And like I say, sometimes these questions like my story about the reading if we just ran something through here or move on with what we've always seen, what we've always done, we can actually accidentally cut off the moments like this from happening. And uh, the ceremony is, is just so fertile for this kind of beautiful, meaningful moment. It just sometimes takes a little bit more thought than perhaps the kind of rote, I've seen this before, I've done this a thousand times mode that we can get into. Okay. Any quick questions before we pop off here? Ava says this class has been amazing. I'm so glad to hear that. This presentation. Yeah, call it what you, you can call it whatever you want. Ava. <laughs> Mark's blabbing has been amazing today. <laughs> and uh, we make it really special too by being in the chat together. Uh, apparently it's a gorgeous day out there for most people. So uh, feel free to head out there. Uh, I am helping people in the in the course with scripts and things like that uh wedding workshops wedding season is upon us super exciting time i know lots of you here have a wedding or loads of weddings coming up and i'm just really happy to be on this journey with you one thing i will say before i head off is as always come so more than one thing uh if you want to come in and join all these incredible members and get the script and get my videos get access to the love story caster unlimited times which writes the couple's love story for you in three minutes you just put their answers in and you know, it's not just the AI or GPT. I worked for about 100 hours on the perfect recipe formula to get it to tell the story exactly as I would tell it. And as I've taught people to tell it for years and years. Uh, so the output is incredible. So check out unboringweddingacademy.com if you're not a member already. But the thing that I wanted to say was, if you miss any of these, there are now playlists on YouTube. Friday Live has its own playlist. So literally, you could just click and go. I think there's 28 videos and there's 28 Fridays. And also this as well, the Wedding Hero Wednesdays, that's its own playlist. So if you ever missed anything, you could click and just start working through your own playlist, working through from page one of this book, all the way up to 64 or whatever we made it to today, okay? Love doing we weddings with you. Squish the like button. I love how creative we are getting with our verbs to the things we're going to do to the like <laughs> to the like button. Uh, so Ava, you know, you can call whatever today was, call it whatever you want. And Sabrina, you can do, you know, encourage people to squish it, squash it, slosh it, uh, whatever you want to do to the like button. I appreciate that. I appreciate being on this journey with you. I look forward to next Wednesday. We're going to keep going through the elements. Will we make it through the whole thing? Cue dramatic music. Who knows? Uh, but 
I'm not in a hurry because I love spending time with you. What am I going to do when, when I get to the end of the book? What, what, what am I going to do then? What, what's the excuse I'm going to do to hang out with all you wonderful people every day? Thanks for letting me be part of this journey. Uh, and uh, as I always say, have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful weekend if you got a wedding. Thank you for trusting me with this. And uh, marry on, friends. I appreciate being a part of your story.